How are you, Kate? Okay, I'm going to come up to the video. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to show a short. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's um, Hampstead School Board meeting on May 22nd, 2018. It is a regular meeting. Melissa? Yes. Here. I see that Jason Cipriano is currently absent. Caitlin Parnell? Here. James Sweeney? Here. Karen Yusenka? Here. Pinkerton Academy student liaison, Sophie Chiricello? Here. And also seated at the board table is Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Roxanne Wilson. Will you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Oops. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next we have approval of the minutes. There are two sets, May 8th regular meeting and a non-public meeting. Take a minute to look them over, please. And if there are no changes to it, I will accept a motion to accept them as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. Are there any public comments, Melissa? Is there anyone here for public comments tonight? We don't have any requests. Okay. Uh, Pinkerton highlights. All right, this week at Pinkerton is Senior Weeks. Seniors get to participate in the Spirit Week, so every day they get to dress up as something. Today was Sports Day, tomorrow's like Joke Day, and then we have College Day coming up. Following this week, seniors have Banquet and Senior Cookout the 7th and 8th, and then graduation is the 11th, and then they're all done. Um, Pinkerton hosted Junior Prom last Saturday evening. The prom went really good, and the theme was holiday, Hollywood Lights. Emails also went home to families this week after successfully completing a school-wide lockdown drill. This drill helped the administration practice all of their safety procedures and look for any holes. Attached to the email was a full list of different safety protocols for parents to look over. Um, tomorrow evening is the National Honor Society induction ceremony. Returning seniors will be joined by new seniors and new juniors who will be inducted into the National Honor Society. Pinkerton will be holding their spring instrumental and chorus concert on May 31st. Students have been working all year in this class to prepare for this show. For Pinkerton sports, Pinkerton's undefeated boys tennis team beat Bedford last week. Bedford has not lost a match in 111 games. That's over seven years. <laughs> this now makes Pinkerton boys have an undefeated season and their first seed. Pinkerton girls tennis ended their regular season with an eight and six record, so it's still pretty good. That's it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? No? Thank you, Sophie. We appreciate it. Next, current business. Mr. Dowd, tuition rates, please. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. It, it's just so nice to see such a full room um, here this evening. I had a hard time getting over here, so that's great. So you have in front of you a, a memorandum we issue annually for board approval relating to setting the um, outside or tuition rates for someone who would like to tuition their child into uh, one of our schools here in town. Now, I was here a year ago-ish presenting a similar um, uh, proposal and at the time it, there was a little bit of a, of, of, I don't say con concern or what have you, but if you look at the historic rates that we have from 15-16 uh, you'll see the elementary rate at 17,800 and middle, middle school 18,600. And then as you move forward, you'll see that there's more of a disparity and sometimes middle school is higher, sometimes the elementary school is higher. And these numbers are based on um, Department of Ed and State issued um, uh, education rates for the previous year. So the, these were based on the rates, the actual rates for the 16-17 year rolled forward into the current year budget, rolled forward by that percentage, rolled forward by the percent going into the subsequent year budget. 
And from that, we've come up with, and based on enrollments in 16, 17, and rolling it forward, the numbers really haven't jived. So this year I took a look and said, you know, would it make more sense to take more of an average between the two schools, roll them forward based on the percentage increase for the current budget year and roll them forward based on the current, uh, based on the percentage increase proposed for the following year. And doing so, I came up with 19,200 for each of the elementary and middle school, 9,600 for kindergarten, and special education, 38,400. So this is a little bit different than what we've done in the past. It seems to make some sense based on, on some historic data that we use, roll forward based on some you know, projections that we use from this point going forward. Um, and if you're in agreement with those tuition rates, I would, I would ask you to um, uh, consider them and, um, and approve them. Otherwise, I have, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to, um, to assist. Any questions? I had a conversation with Mr. Dowd about this before, so I had my questions answered. But does anyone have any questions? Um, also. As far as the uh, tuition aid that we get from the state, the $3,660, I believe, mm -hmm. um, is that something that's set annually, or is that a fixed rate? That's a fixed <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know that there's some committees in work right now, currently, but the 3600 That's been fixed largely in the same range for, um, for some time, and, and that, that's based on your actual enrollment. So the amount you receive is based on your actual enrollment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that 3600 I believe, reflects the cost of an adequate education. Yeah, that's up for debate mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no other questions? Um, I will accept a motion to accept the tuition, tuition rates as presented for the 2018-2019 school year. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you, you, you Mr. Daff. <clears throat> Next, we have the highlight of the evening here. This is what we're waiting for. Um, <laughs> the Hampstead Central School Unified Arts Integration Program, and a performance by some of our students. Mr. Collins? I just would like to introduce five of the people that are big cogs in making Central School such a successful school. I'd like to read to you our mission statement. There's a couple of integral pieces I want you to hear. The mission of the Hampstead Central School is to create a school culture that fosters a love of learning as we prepare all students for the future. This is where I want you to listen carefully through a collaborative, academic, and integrated arts environment. Please remember that. Students will thrive as they develop intellectually, physically, socially, and emotionally. These five teachers that are here to speak to you tonight make that happen because they put the whole arts thing right out front. They also make it happen because it just goes into every single classroom throughout the school. We have a number of our teachers that have gone off for a significant amount of studies of how to bring arts into the classroom, and I attribute it to all the work that starts right here. They're very good people. They do wonderful things. You're only going to see a piece of it tonight. It happens every single day at Central School, so I'd like to introduce my wonderful Unified Arts team. All right. The crowd gathers. <laughs> Good evening, and thank you for inviting us to present our integration events. At the end of this presentation, you will have a glimpse into each of our integrated programs, and following this, we have a treat for you with our valued group here. Um, am I supposed to change the slide, yes. says the technology teacher. Yes. Could you also introduce who you are? So I that will. Your, your audience in TV land? Yes. Um, so we are, um, I'm Brooke Pet Petroselli, the technology teacher, um, Angie Ingraham, PE, Sandy Kvichian behind me, Amanda Stark. It's a good thing I have these up here so that I can remember <laughs> everybody's name. Um, Amanda, and then Michael Torelli, who is music, and we'll each be giving our own parts to this. All right. So this slide is a compilation of words that can be used for integration. This is a word cloud, and it's a digital tool I sometimes use uh, with my kids um, in the lab um, to summarize vocabulary or of a unit or of an experience. 
And if you just take a second to read, you know, just get a, a glimmer of that, this is kind of all the words that we use for integration. And I will turn this over to my <coughs> colleague. I'll be back. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I was asked to speak a little bit about some of the more current research, and there are many of the colleagues, including myself, who attended Lesley University in the Arts Integration Master's Program, and we were so fortunate to see all the research that is out there, and I've given all of you a larger page that just has some of the research for technology, art, music for all of us. But very simply put, from thousands of years ago, it's I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, and we are your do team. We are the do team and I understand. So Eric um, Jensen was asking about what are the effects of a fully Im implemented arts program, and as you can see from our slide here, we have higher attendance with um, an arts integrated program, increased love of learning, enhanced creativity, a more prepared citizen for the workplace of tomorrow, as you will see by these guys, and a greater cultural awareness. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Amanda Stark, I'm the music teacher. Um, before I talk about one of our big shows, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my musicians for being here tonight. Thank you for parents for bringing them so much, you're in for a treat. So I'm going to talk about our fourth grade multicultural show. In fourth grade, we travel around the globe and learn the music of many different cultures from Ghana and Sweden to Scotland and Italy. We explore the music, instruments, dances, and languages of each culture. We rehearse for eight weeks and perform songs with choreographed dances for our friends and family at the multicultural show. The importance of the multicultural show goes beyond learned skills and an amazing performance. It travels deeper into the understanding of cultural connectedness. Although they take on a variety of forms, music, art, and dance are shared by each and every culture. It is through this realization that we hope our students will find themselves connected to the rest of the world as we strive to find kindness, understanding, and peace in our society. As famed cellist Yo-Yo Ma said, music enhances the education of our children by help helping them to make connections and broadening the depth with which they think and feel. If we are to hope for a society of culturally literate people, music must be a vital part of our children's education. Thank you. Um, music happens all year round in our classrooms. We integrate all year, uh, every day, from rhyming and patterns in kindergarten, literature and storytelling in first grade, rhythm and holidays in second grade, poetry and improvisation in third grade, all the way to musical math and dancing in fourth grade. Integration is something that happens in all our classes throughout the year. Yeah. Okay, so we go back to technology. So this first uh, slide shows a variety of tools and activities that we use in the technology lab and integrated across the classroom cur curriculum. Throughout the year, we do math, social studies, science, language arts, all infused into, to teach digital, digital literacy. We also practice a great deal of critical thinking, problem solving, communication, and collaboration, which are the hallmarks of 21st century teaching. Technology is an ideal medium to integrate as we must use classroom content to teach digital tools and digital literacy. Now my fourth grade uh, multicultural show is our culminating unit for the four years that I've had these children. Um, but in third grade, our largest integration project is the Colonial America unit. Um, this screen shows the content areas that we cover with the technology project. We build background information of Colonial America, and we have virtual field trips to Williamsburg, uh, Virginia, and other similar sites. And we use Google Earth to get a feel for the geography. And then we launch into a colonial world in Minecraft. Research shows that students learn and retain best when fully immersed and in control of their learning process. They enter the world and must cross the ocean in boats. Once they land in the wilds of New Hampshire, they must clear a spot for the village, plan and collaborate to build together and create a community. At the completion of this project, they write a letter describing their adventures to a fictional family back in Europe. And they do this uh, within Google Docs, which extends their keyboarding and their digital tools experience. And they all did that. And I will hand it over to Michael. I'm Michael Turley, the Hampstead Central School art teacher. 
integrating the arts has been an integral part of my teaching practice for 25 years now. Um, art is integrated into every major um, unified arts grade level integrated event, but I'm going to speak to you now specifically about the second grade community performance presentation. Um, I have to first begin by giving a shout out to my colleagues that I work with, the, both the grade level teachers and my awesome unified arts team. This is a huge collaborative effort to be able to make these events happen, and um, as well as our administration. Um, our, our grade two community art unit aligns with the new national course standards on the visual arts. And I have a slide here. Um, so I'm just gonna run through very quickly the sequential art unit, which was on display on Friday at the annual community pr um, presentation. And here we go. We begin each unit with a self-portrait activity. That, that happens at the very beginning of the year. I introduce and define community as a group of people who live and work in the same area. We are all important members of our community, thus the self-portraits, including you, our students, our youth. And um, we, we look at famous self-portraits by um, famous artists like Vincent Van Gogh and Frida Kahlo, to name a few. Um, our next activity is our family portrait activity. Uh, our communities are made up of families and people, and the students in grade two create detailed representation of their families in their yards and in front of their homes. Um, our third activity in the community unit is they build their, their ceramic homes. They build their homes out of clay. Um, and again, connecting it to the community, but also it's a visual arts activity um, aligned with the visual arts standards, the national visual arts standards. The fourth lesson in the sequential unit is um, we create acrylic paintings of the important community buildings, um, which again, were on display on Friday, they looked fantastic. And then our fifth and our final activity, oh no, I forgot one of my favorites. Um, the kids also construct an illustrated map of Hampstead, not to scale, using both collage and paint. And um, that as well was on, on view yesterday, on, on Friday. Um, our culminating activity is to create the banners that you saw in the parade. The mar kids march in the parade, they carry the banners. Um, that's all I've got. I'm gonna pass it on. There you go. I'm Angie Ingraham, and I am going to be talking about the first grade integration project. Um, we do Flag Day. We work with um, the physical education teachers, work with the grade, um, grade one teachers, and we do a presentation that focuses on celebrating and incorporating dance, locomotion movements, sign language, self space, fast and slow rhythm. Um, the grade one students there's another one. The grade, the grade one students learn fun movement patterns and patriotic songs. They do poetry, they do, and the flag day show. Each um, class uses one of the following. They use scarves, ribbons, bells, loomy sticks. Um, the students work together to help um, do the patterns. Um, and to see those kids up there performing is just brilliant as a first grader. So that's what we do. Thank you. So again, I'm Mrs. Kfechen, most people call me Mrs. K, and this is a picture of some of the additional integrated um, events that Ms. Ingraham and I are so fortunate to do. So in first grade, I see three first graders over there. They did an artisan residence. Troy, who's up on top of the ladder, he actually balanced that ladder on his chin. He is a former Ringling Clown, and he worked with all the first graders, and if you notice, to even further our arts integration, there's Mrs. Stark playing live trumpet music for us, so fabulous. In second grade, we do the community dances, and my little friend Allie gave me permission. So we're trying to incorporate art with our dance. Um, so the kids drew a picture of their home, and then they danced to the song called Home by Nick Jonas. So again, putting the art with the dance to integrate. Uh, Miss Ingraham is taking the second graders bowling, which we integrate a lot of our math. In third grade, we teach um, colonial dances and colonial games. Last year, our live musicians were from Vermont, so it's nice to bring in um, live music. In fourth grade, we teach games from around the world at different times. And next Friday, anyone who would like to come, we're hiking the flume, the whole fourth grade goes. And usually, we get over 50 parents that come, so it's a great event where we integrate the social studies and science. And for the entire school, we do field day. 
Our theme this year is pirates, so if you like pirates, come by on June 8th. And Olympics, I'm an Olympicaholic. I just love the Olympics. This year, Miss Ingram and I had them um, bobsledding in the gym and curling, and it was just a great event. So we do the Summer and Winter Olympics. So again, um, we love to integrate the arts at our school. So now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you just an absolutely extraordinary group of students. It is my greatest pleasure to work with them. They are just absolutely incredible. They are part of our, they are a fourth grade percussion ensemble called DRUM. They will tell you in a moment what DRUM stands for. And we are going to perform for you in a drum circle. And drum circle is all about finding your voice. It's about listening to others and then creating a collective voice, a new collective voice. And that's what we're all about here at Integrated Arts. That's what we're about here at the Hampstead Central School. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you our drum ensemble. Go ahead, guys. guys so much thank you all very much thank you that was very nice very impressive thank you for coming we appreciate nice that job, guys are those drums heavy everything wants to try huh? <laughs> steel drums next time <laughs> You're all leaving. I wanted to say thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> thank you. Same thing that we said for the uh, middle school. We appreciate all that you do for putting the A in STEAM. Thank you so much. Where'd everybody go? I know. That was amazing. Very nice. Wait a minute. That was, that was a good segue to... Um, okay, there's one other thing that I've asked Dr. Dancy to put on for us. Um, I attended the uh, second grade community event on Friday, and I've asked if he could put on just a sample of a video that we saw on Friday. It's really like 13 and a half minutes long. I've asked him to put on just a sampling. It will be on uh, 
table. It'll be on our website uh, probably within a week. But I'd like you to just take a look at it now and see how, see how our kids feel about the community that they live in. I think our DVD got stuck in it. A little snippet. Let's see if I can. Well, that was a little sample. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was cute. The reason I asked them to put this on, though, was uh, for those of us who were there, um, they ran like a little, they were anchors, and they were talking about the different uh, things in Hampstead, the different buildings, what they'd learned about the history of the different buildings and, and, and Depot Road. And um, they were really good examples of community and collaboration and, and working together. So I wanted you to see a little bit of that. And when it comes on cable, please make sure you take a look at it. I think it'll be on the school website too. We'll get it on our YouTube channel so you guys can see it there. Okay. And I also wanted to just say a few things about that and then combine it with something we really hadn't talked about yet. And that is about our addition. And I thought that these just, it blended together uh, very well. So I just want to mention a few things. First of all, each year for as many years as I can remember, uh, the second grade and the UA have presented this community event. And I have to say, I think that this is one of the best that I've ever seen. A lot of hard work went into it, and it was exceptional. Right, Mr. Sweeney? It was fantastic. I loved it. It was there, too. It began outside with a parade that was kicked off with a police escort. Parents and well-wishers lined the parade route, clapping and cheering on our students as they carried their handmade banners. Um, and they marched around the building. And then fire trucks with sirens blaring singled, uh, signaled the end of the parade. Once inside, the presentation began. It included folk dances, uh, the video that you will see when it's up, and a number of songs emphasizing the importance of community. School district feels it's important that children learn about the history of the town they live in, so they may feel more a part of it. They learned that over the, over the years, eight different buildings were used as the school, including the current memorial gym and the town hall. The pride and sense of community, community spirit on part of all our students, really just filled the room. And I thought we all felt that as we were leaving. The teachers and children did an excellent job reminding us all of what it means to live in a community with others. And historically, Hampstead residents have always supported excellence in education by passing school budgets and passing teacher contracts. However, the one area that I feel we have fallen short is our failure to pass a bond that would provide a 21st century elementary school for our children, a school that includes much needed safety and security features, renovations, and adequate instructional space, a school that our kids deserve a safe environment, which is conducive to learning. Since the last election, a lot of people 
have asked me, why do you think it doesn't pass? And they've thrown out a lot of different ideas. Well, you need to be educated more. You need another flyer. Maybe you didn't call enough people or knock on enough doors. Um, but sadly, I think, you know, my personal opinion is I've really come to believe that this will not happen unless we take seriously our sense of communion, um, communion, hmm, community, as do our children. Uh, community is a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Our kids get it. They live it every day in their classrooms, with the sharing of their resources and collaborating to meet their goals. So I feel that now it's you know, our turn to put the you in community and unite by working together. And I'm convinced that unless there is a mind shift or a change of heart in Hampstead, this bond will not pass. Everyone must be on board, walking, uh, working towards the common goal, sharing resources. That means parents, folks without children in the schools, business owners, landowners, town leaders, and all civic organizations must all be willing to participate in this effort. In towns where school projects have passed, such as Salem and Hampton, it has been a true community effort with all stakeholders taking an active part. And I believe that's what we need to happen here. And in conclusion, I would just say, just circle around, I think perhaps we should all take a page from our second graders and learn how to work together in community sharing our resources, our time, our talent, and our finances to realize our common goals. So I want to say thank you to the people who presented this community show and um, for all that they do for our kids. Thanks. Well said. Thank you. Um, next, Director of Curriculum, Mrs. Buco speaking to us on uh, Pearson Elevate Science Program. And we have some samples of the uh, student text to share with you this evening. Thanks. Thank you. So I'm here this evening to propose a K-8 science program that will provide rigorous, high-quality science instruction and increase student science competency. Following our district uh, textbook adoption calendar, our K through 8 science program is slated for adoption for the coming school year. The last time we adopted a new science series for uh, middle school was 2006, fall of 2006, and for central school it was fall 2007. And the current programs that we are using at central school and middle school are not aligned with the current uh, New Hampshire College and Career Ready standards. They lack technology components. They uh, lack the online components. Um, their content doesn't allow for differentiation, et cetera. So the program that we are proposing tonight for adoption for the coming year is the Pearson uh, Elevate Science Program. So uh, tonight, I'll brief, give you a brief overview of the Next Generation Science Standards, which is the, the basis of the New Hampshire College and Career Ready Standards. I'll speak to uh, the selection process, why we're recommending this particular program, and how we're going to go about implementing the program in the district. This slide may look familiar to you uh, when we used this slide last year when we presented the, uh, the science curriculum. Um, and as I mentioned, this is the basis of the New Hampshire College and Career Ready Standards. And um, the National Research Council um, created these standards, which explain the expectations for what students need to be, the knowledge and skills that they need to have to be proficient in science. And um, these expectations include having students acquire scientific knowledge and use evidence-based learning. Uh, to have students go really deeper in their thinking to extend, revise, and uh, refine the knowledge that they are attaining in science. There are three dimensions uh, to the next generation science standards. The first one is practices. And this, uh, this, the practices look at what real scientists do when they are involved in investigations, as well as what engineers do when they are working on designs and prototypes. And these practices really require more inquiry in our science program, K through eight. 
for the cross-cutting concepts, these concepts link all three domains of science, physical science, earth and space science, and life science, and also that domain of engineering across all grades, K through 12. An example of um, some cross-cutting concepts would be cause and effect, patterns, energy, matter structure and function, and stability and change. So we have, oh, I forgot one. Um, core ideas. <laughs> uh, these ideas uh, put the focus of K through 12 science curriculum instruction and assessment on the most important science aspects. And in order for an idea to be considered core, uh, it must include such criteria as it must be a key tool for understanding or investigating complex ideas or solving problems, and it must be teachable and learnable over multiple grades based on increasing levels of depth and expectations. So th the Central School uh, Science Committee and the Middle School Science Co Committee actually uh, began this process last year when we um, identified the criteria, those components um, we felt were um, essential to the program that we wanted to adopt in the district, such as the uh, science program must um, align with the next generation science standards, the program must reflect scientific accuracy, uh, there must be frequent opportunities for hands-on science experiences. We wanted to see connections with our math and ELA curriculum standards. Uh, we really wanted um, a strong online component with our program, and we wanted uh, to also to see a variety of assessments, including performance assessments in our program. So we had uh, several sales representatives come and present to us. Um, and based on our initial criteria, uh, we did select two programs to pilot. At middle school, we did pilot two programs. One we only piloted for a couple of weeks, and because it wasn't meeting our criteria, we decided central school wasn't even necessary for them to pilot that program. Uh, both schools did pilot a, a second program. This particular program that we're recommending to you tonight, uh, we did not pilot it because it wasn't available to us in late winter. However, um, we had all the materials to review. We had the online demo that we had access to. We had presentations at each school by a trainer. And we are very familiar with the Pearson uh, company, the publisher of this program, because Pearson is, all, uh, is the publisher of our Envision Math program, K through five. So teachers are very familiar with all the, the, um, the online components. So based on our criteria and our examination of, of the programs, we are re recommending adoption of the Elevate Science program across the district K through eight. And I wanted to highlight uh, why we're recommending um, this program, and highlight some of the features of the program. Um, the program we found does address um, the national, uh, next, excuse me, the next generation science standards. And this program was actually created after the next generation science standards were rolled out, <laughs> which I think is, is um, a, a good feature. Students are engaged in phenomena-based inquiry using what is known as uh, connect, investigate, synthesize, and demonstrate um, learning model. And let me just give you some background information as to what we mean by phenomena-based inquiry. Natural phenomena are observable events that occur in the universe and that we can use our scientific knowledge to explain or predict, such as why do we see dew in the summer but frost in the winter? And the goal of um, building students' knowledge in science is for them to develop general ideas based on evidence that can explain and predict uh, various phenomena. So the focus of student learning is shifting from learning about a topic to figuring out why or how something happens, and that's really the focus of this program. So for example, instead of simply learn, students simply learning about the topics of photosynthesis and mitosis, students are engaged in building evidence-based explanatory ideas that help them figure out how a tree grows. Another feature of this program, uh, students are um, encouraged to investigate like a scientist and problem solve like an engineer. And every topic in our K through eight program begins with an essential question and a quest such as what is energy and how is it related to motion. Um, we love uh, the focus on hands-on experiments and there's a lot of virtual investigations, um, such as um, students 
one of the virtual investigation students have to create online this ramp that will uh, go over a, a river. And um, there's also that strong connection to our 21st century skills, which we're really emphasizing in the district. An example of the critical thinking connection with the real world problem in eighth grade, uh, students uh, have to examine the advantages and disadvantages to re increase reliance on genetically engineered crop, which is crops, which is a real world problem. Uh, another strong feature of this program are the connections to the literacy and math standards. And in every unit, teachers can see the next generation science standards that are emphasized, the English language arts standards, and the math standards. For example, um, in one of the units, students have to explain events, procedures, ideas, or concepts in a scientific text, including what happened and why, based on specific information in the text, and that's an English language arts standard. An example of a math standard would be students are reasoning, reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. Um, we like the strong emphasis on literary, literacy connections, such as students in their science um, lessons will be drawing conclusions, using text evidence, comparing and contrasting, um, doing cause and effect, and they're definitely developing their academic science vocabulary. Another great feature of the program, uh, students, excuse me, teachers are given strategies for differentiating their instruction, so there's lots of uh, ideas for um, for supporting students who may be struggling uh, learners or even uh, lots of ideas for supporting our advanced learners. There's also multiple means of assessment in this program. There's online tests that teachers can adapt. There's evidence-based assessments, performance assessments with assessment rubrics. Another great feature of this program are the career connections at each grade level. For example, in second grade, students are reading about toy engineers and how toy engineers use computers to design uh, their toys, to test their toys, to make sure these toys are safe. And uh, students read about how toy engineers have to observe properties of materials to make the toys better and safer. Another feature of this program that we like is the compatibility with Google Classroom, which we use in our district. Um, Another great feature, especially for our K through two teachers, because we have a limited time in the schedule for science instruction, in every unit in the grade level, um, there are highlighted essential components, um, which is a great feature uh, for our teachers because of our limited time, so they know exactly what are the essential components to, to address in science at those grade levels with, because of our limited time for science instruction. As far as the cost, what, um, what we'd be purchasing would be six-year licenses for write-in student texts, and, and you have examples of the write-in student texts, and the teacher editions, and the digital course uh, wear for both students and teachers, as well as some of the classroom material kits. Some of the no-cost items that will be provided to us are these um, readers uh, for every, well, be, this would be for K through five, and um, the readers are differentiated for different reading levels. And there's also uh, STEM engineering readers that are um, each grade level will receive K through five, which is another great feature. Uh, so we have the, the literacy connection. Now for, I wanted to highlight something for middle school in particular. Uh, we do have some samples of those very thick course uh, two and three texts. What we're going to be pu uh, pub um, purchasing from the company, if, we, if you accept this adoption, are, what are the mo modules which we have now for our science program. So we're going to be buying the modules that support our curriculum, um, our earth and space science modules, physical science modules, and life science modules, such as uh, we'll be purchasing the modules on earth systems, atoms and uh, chemical reactions. So we're picking, the, we're choosing those modules that support our curriculum. I don't have samples to show you tonight because they're in the process of being printed, but they're, they're going to be ready for us in, in the fall. So um, looking at the cost, we had budgeted uh, through the budget process um, 
$137,693 for a science program. And what we're looking at now, um, the breakdown for central school, middle school, and the professional development. So it's coming in under what we had um, um, the approved budget. Now, for the professional development, um, we, we will have two professional development sessions at both buildings throughout the school year, and there would be additional funds if we find that we need more professional development for this year. And I'm thinking maybe at Central School we might want a third professional development session for our, for our staff. And um, something else that's being provided to us from the company at no cost are the classroom safety kits and the classroom labware kits and some makerspace kits, which um, Brooke was excited about because she could be supporting um, um, our science instruction using those makerspace kits in, in um, her classes. So questions you may have about the program, the cost. I just read the um, grade two book pretty close to cover to cover. It's incredible. Oh my goodness. Isn't it? Um, I think it's everything both of my kids wanted in second grade. I mean, it's outlined, you know, as a quest and mm -hmm. seeking information and the way that it explains on the scientific method is completely relatable to grade two. It's incredible. So I'm working on grade four right now. <laughs> and my first thought is, um, should we implement this for the grade four, the incoming fourth grade? Are they going to um, struggle with some of these concepts because they've been on a different science program previously? Or, I mean, it's going to take some time, I guess. I think that's going to take some time for us to determine that. Yeah. Um, but uh, what, um, even though our current science programs are, are old, <laughs> we do have materials that teachers have been using that support our current curriculum. Mm -hmm. So uh, teachers are using the current curriculum using uh, materials that we currently have on hand. So it's not like um, students would be um, missing some part of the curriculum. They won't be missing. Mm -mm. I, I must say, the central school teachers are so excited about this program. Oh, I just read that book, and it's so exciting. <laughs> I mean, it really is a, um, it, everything from, you know, like you said, the toy engineer, that would definitely get their excitement at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. And uh, it goes all the way into environmental science. So, you know, environmental engineering. Right. That, that's incredible. And all uh, the student texts are completely online, so uh, parents will be able to um, access the program at home. Um, it, uh, if it's for some students, um, they may benefit from having the text read aloud to them, and that, that's a feature. Um, a, a child could highlight an unfamiliar word, and um, they would get the definition of, of that unfamiliar word. Uh, it, the connections, the technology connections are phenomenal. <coughs> Thank you um, for presenting, Doris. And I just wanted to highlight uh, just something as I was looking through some of the materials that, are, that would be part of the program and kind of reinforce something as well. I understand that, not necessarily in Hampstead, but I understand that in perhaps other districts and other, other places, um, teachers might f feel some reluctance or some trepidation on teaching certain science issues, including things like climate change and human impact on climate change. First and foremost, it's part of the next generation science standards. So um, it, it's detailed out in NGS, um, S, um, in a couple of places. Uh, and I think it's just worthwhile to bring up that the curriculum I'm happy to see because it adheres to those standards, does address it, and that no educator in Hampstead, I think, should feel any trepidation about teaching valid science. Mm -hmm. So. I just wanted to point that out and make that clear, abundantly clear. Any other comments or questions? Okay, if not. Thank you. If not, we have to act on this. I'll accept a motion to accept the Pearson Elevate Science Program uh, that was just presented to us for so, grades K through eight. eight. Mm -hmm. So moved. A second. Any discussion? I'm really excited to see this roll out in our schools. I think this is going to be incredible. Nice work. <laughs> All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. Can I just make a comment? Uh, Doris, could you please thank your science committee and the teachers who did the piloting mm -hmm. and the investigating? Because I think they did a thorough job. And uh, this is exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, I'm really excited thank about it. That's all I thank you. For. Thank yeah. you for your leadership in that. Did you get to see any of this?
Dr. Dancy, uh, school board meeting locations. Good evening. And before I begin with that, there were a couple of items that I'd like to bring to your attention. The first thing is that the work on our new website and mobile app has begun over the weekend and, and today. And the thing that you need to know is that our current mobile app will expire on June 30th. And there might be a little bit of downtime before people can start downloading the new app uh, that will tie together with our website. I, I wanted to bring that to the board before I started publicizing it on our website. So just need to know that our current mobile app, the Blackboard app, will no longer be useful after June 30th. Of course, in July, there's not much happening, so it's not like we're going to miss it a lot. The second thing, I don't know if Melissa has uh, given you this uh, audit update. We're 87 percent finished with that. There's a few things that are still left, and most of that, the summer projects will finish up for us. So. Um, if you have any questions about that at another time, feel free to talk to me about that. Um, so I have prepared for you uh, a feasibility report for moving these meetings into one of our buildings, uh, either of our buildings. I've prepared three different options for you, and my assumptions were based on that you would like to maintain the quality of production that you receive right here at the town hall. And so I reached out to Northeast Digital Integrators who have outfitted most of the equipment in this room and also the new equipment that was in the Hampstead Middle School cafeteria this year. And so they provided me some, uh, not quotes, some estimates. I wanted to make that very clear. This is not actual quotes. These are estimates. Um, and so the first option to have your meetings at the middle school cafeteria we would need to do some upgrading on some of our equipment there, especially our sound equipment. In any one of these options, I'm recommending eight uh, lavalier microphones similar to the ones that you're wearing right now uh, so that they're wireless and that they have that same quality. We know that whenever we do uh, the large meetings over at the middle school and we use the desktop microphones, those are not always reliable as people will not always speak into them and sometimes they're not turned on. So I would, like, I would recommend that we would maintain these same style of microphones. And you can see uh, a package of those, a kit of that would run around $5,000. At the middle school, I would also want to invest in new speakers. One of ours just blew out last week, Mr. Robbins told me. So we really do need to invest into some new speakers and some maintenance to fix some of the issues that we have there, but to optimize our sound quality. I would also like to mount a projector over, your, over the head so that it doesn't shine in anybody's eyes and that you could maintain using the large screen. And also connect to the television on the side of the room as a monitor for the board so that we don't have to set up a second projector with a second screen. Um, so with that, and I added a little bit of labor in there because I can't ins we can't install everything. We're not audiovisual experts there. Around 12,300 to upgrade the middle school to have regular meetings there. The second option is a permanent installation in the central school. Now that's given this package here is the same equipment that you might find here or some that's already over in the, uh, the middle school. Uh, one of the largest expenses is the video switcher encoder for streaming at $10,000. This has a high quality broadcast for live streaming to our YouTube channel. Anything we do over in the central school is going to need to go through streaming and then transfer it over onto our channel six because we don't have a line that goes over there. I have, I've not investigated with Comcast and I'll speak a little bit later about Comcast, but we would need to have some sort of connection if we wanted to just do a live. I'm not quite sure how that would work yet, but my theory in my mind is to go through a streaming process and then have the streaming uploading into our Channel 6 station at the middle school. I'm probably speaking Greek, but that, that's just some of the things. Also included in here um, at the central, now this was in the central school library, I included a 55 inch screen television for presentations, um, a rack for mounting equipment, that would be a permanent rack, uh, the cabling, uh, the wireless microphones, but you can see there the estimate there is around $38,250 to set up a permanent installation of cameras that are similar to these, only three of them instead of four because I think we could do the same thing with three there and, and the rest of the installation. 
The third option is a mobile, transportable kit, say like in a casing like this, that could be taken anywhere and that you could go to the middle school library or the central school library. And it would include many of the same things that the permanent installation has, with the exception that the cameras would be on tripods. The, one of the downsides to that is that we wouldn't have the remote control of the cameras that you get in these ones here. We have a controller upstairs that allows us to move those cameras around. Um, but a lot of the, as you can see, a lot of the same equipment there, and that estimate is around 24,000. Now on the back of this sheet, I also listed what I see as a personnel need. If we do have meetings at the central school, if we want to do live streaming and live broadcast on channel six, I would recommend a person at the central school and another person at the middle school to move that broadcast onto the, the television station. The, uh, the central school library, if we just went live streaming, one person. If it was um, central school library, uh, uh, live streaming and channel six, two people. I'm sorry, I, the first one up there is the middle school cafeteria because that's all located in one space, would only require one person. And then the portable broadcast, again, would require two people because you need somebody in the studio to monitor that broadcast. And before I finish, I do want to speak to the future of Channel 6. Channel 6 is, a, um, is an analog broadcast station. And most of you know that about 10 or 15 years ago, most of our transmissions in the United States went to digital and you had to buy a digital adapter for your televisions in order to see a lot of the programming. We still broadcast out of the middle school on an analog channel, which is why our station lies so low on the, on the Comcast guide. Channel 6, you can't find it in the 500s or the, or the 700s because it's not a digital channel. So that's one of the reasons why quality is, is less on channel six that it is on channel 17. They have a digital encoder here. Comcast provides one digital encoder for their community access program and channel six is part of that. Channel 17 has the digital encoder. I've inquired this week and I'm supposed to hear later on this week what it would require or what it would cost of the district if we wanted a digital encoder added to our system because they're not just going to give it to us. They only do one for the community. So I can get back to that, but I do want you to know that, that if we do start doing regular broadcasts, we're on an analog channel, lower quality, and if we can't get a digital encoder for that, then the expected life on channel six may not be very long. We can still stream digitally to the internet, to our YouTube channel. We can still record and broadcast those meetings, um, not, not live, but recorded on channel 17 and channel six. So I just wanted you to be aware of some of the factors that are involved. And, and that, that kind of concludes what I've put together as our feasibility study. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ms. Abrazizi. All right, so if we get the information for a digital encoder for channel six, yes. and we obtain one of these things, would you be able to receive that channel uh, without cable, with just a digital antenna? The digital encoder is for Comcast cable subscribers. So it, it would... That's all that it will would do still only is, be on cable. is provide for Comcast cable subscribers. Okay. Similar to Channel 17. All right. All right. So my first thoughts on this is um, option two is a definite no. I mean... $38,000 doesn't make any sense to me to put something in the library that we're hoping to turn into a classroom. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, I like the idea of option three with a mobile broadcasting only because um, then it would give us the ability to live stream the children's events like the community show. Um, and the other multicultural things, if, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Uh, well, with some of this, can I just say that I could live stream this meeting using this device oh, right yeah. now. The quality would, nowhere be, would not be anywhere near what you want it to be. Using this equipment to, to do any one of our events is going to require substantial setup 
and trained personnel in order to do that. All right. Anytime you set that up. The beauty of this, I'm just going to say that the beauty of this environment, this is a TV studio right here. It's set up, always ready to go, takes one person to flip on the switch and run the whole show. Any mobile thing you do is going to require at least an hour of setup. It's going to require two people to set it up and tear it down and run the thing. I like the, I do like the I like the idea of mobile. I do, I do think it gives us more flexibility to do some of the things. I am mindful of the fact of you know again when we we have Dean for instance over at the SAU we we pay him. I mean it's mm -hmm. it's not a free service. So mm -hmm. um, you, you got to pay for staffing to then do it. But I do like the the notion that it does give us flexibility, not just for the board meetings, but per, per, perhaps for other events uh, as well. So and it doesn't lock us into a single physical location. To Kathleen's point, where we where we still hope to convert that library into something else. So I think it does. It would make sense to go with the, a, a mobile option. So when you looked into this, did you, were you considering that at all, that this might not be used just for school board meetings? My directive was to figure out a feasibility study for moving the school board meetings into right. another place. So hearing what you hear from, from us about, or from some people about using it for other things, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? And knowing that, what would your recommendation be? I know that every time we do a, a, an event, I cross my fingers that somebody is standing behind a video camera to video it so that I can put it on channel six. In five years here, I've not been able to be, find people consistently to be able to do that for us. Sometimes I've had to do it. Uh, we even pay people to do it. We give stipends and it's not always consistent. If I need two people, to set up this large broadcast and make it sure it happens. It's going to require some sort of a, a job description, I think. It's going to require some dedication because volunteer um, it has not worked for us. So I'm all for it if there's somebody that's dedicated to do that. Beside the person, would the, would the equipment in option three handle that? Oh, certainly. Oh, yeah. It's three cameras. I mean, it would be, and you would get a much higher quality broadcast because right now what we do is we aim one camera at the whole thing and we move it back and forth. Whereas this one here, we would set up three different angles. We could have people moving them and then the director who sits there at the, like we do with graduation, the director sits there and picks the shot that they want to see. That's exactly what happens at graduation every year. It takes us a two hour setup to do that for those cameras. And then we get Comcast out there to check the signal when we do it. That's a, that's a huge deal for us. This would be a lot less, but still, until somebody got trained how to do it, it would require, it would require a lot of, of work. Caitlin, any questions? Um, I like the mobile broadcasting idea. I think a lot of, you know, we, there's some challenges to it. Um, especially if we're essentially talking about potentially hiring somebody additionally or adding it to someone's job or something like that. Um, and, you know, my question comes down to we don't know if we can get the en encoder, digital encoder. We don't know what the cost of that is going to be. Right. So that's certainly a bit of uncertainty that makes me hesitant to make a decision tonight if we now, push to that? Can I just say that as far as digital encoding is concerned, the biggest impact would be on a live broadcast. If you wanted a live broadcast to channel six, that's to channel six. And make, I make that distinction. And that's only Comcast customers in the Hampstead community. Your biggest bang for your buck is going to be broadcasting to YouTube. Well, is the live yeah. streaming on the that internet. I was going to say, so, so the people that are going to watch it on analog can watch it on channel six. If we have the equipment where, and we're streaming to YouTube, I mean. We can forget channel six if we really wanted to. That was kind of my uh, other question. I'm wondering. I, I don't disagree with you, <laughs> except that there are a significant number yes, of folks in town that, for whom, you know. That watch it live on channel YouTube six? YouTube is not mm -hmm. 
Correct. Be a, watch it live on Channel 6? They either watch it on, live on Channel 6, watch it later on Channel 6, right. but I, I'm saying there's a segment of people who might not feel as quite as comfortable right. finding well, it on YouTube. And I have budgeted a significant amount of money to improve our servers for next year for Channel 6, and, and, and I will <clears> certainly come back to you with what the encoder, a digital encoder, if it's possible for us to purchase one, what that will cost to upgrade Channel 6. I'm not, please don't hear me saying that we can just throw it away. I'm just saying that as far as a live broadcast is concerned, our, our option to reach more people is actually through a, a live stream on YouTube or some other live streaming service. So I guess I have a question for, regarding the mobile. In your opinion, and I'm not locking you into anything, <laughs> but of other events school-wide, because that seems to be what is appealing about mobile broadcasting, mm -hmm. um, what percentage of them is this feasible that we would actually be able to broadcast? As far as needing to set up, needing to personnel. have needing personnel, I mean, is this something that it really makes sense that we could be doing the third grade colonial show or something like that? Well, if we have, yes, if we have a mobile equipment and we have staff to do it, it's very feasible to do this. We, like I said, we set up video cameras. People set up video cameras all the time. This only requires an extra table that we would put our equipment on so that we could so we could mix the the video as it, as it's live it would be a much in some ways it's a little bit easier on the front end or on the back end because then i don't have to go back and edit some of the stuff because it's already been pre-edited if you'll know if you remember the video that i created for the building project that had the six teachers sitting around the table yep. i used three cameras for that there were two that sat still and then i was holding one and I had to go back and I spent a complete day editing all that vo video footage together and synchronizing all the sound to go with it. I had to use one soundtrack and so that it didn't look like a Godzilla movie. So <laughs> um, in that sense, this type of setup is exactly what you want for those so that you get those multiple angles without having to do all the editing. I think there's, and I don't want to, we don't have to solve this all while we're sitting mm -hmm. here just talking about it, but I, I think there, there are potentially some options. Sophie, is there still an AV club at Pinkerton? There used to be. Do you mm. know? Please say there is so I don't feel old, like it's <laughs> it doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, and the reason I, I brought it up, I, I only bring it up, is like for the evening events or something. Like, let's say it's a, ba a band concert, say in the evening. I'm sure we could, you know, Pinkerton students, once they got trained, would jump at the idea of getting paid to show up for a few hours and... He looks a and little do some recording. Unturbo. I'm what? just throwing. I, that, again, don't touch is that my an equipment. Sure, face or a. <laughs> well, once he said they get paid, that was that kind of changed my mind. But if you were asking for volunteers, I have. Yeah. I mean, Laura Griffin, she's fantastic. Lori Lynn Griffin's daughter, she'll come at the drop of a hat and video anything I want. Those students are few and far between, from what I've seen. But. Um, I, I think we could probably solve this is what I'm saying. I, I, we don't have to solve it tonight, but I think there's, there's potentially a solution out there. It might not be that we can record absolutely everything, but it, mm. I think it gives, yeah. us, it gives us the option at least. I'll sign up for one thing. <laughs> Let me, uh, one caveat that I will say about portable. Anytime you have to set up and tear down, there is more possibility for failure. There is when this room here, when it doesn't have to be set up and torn down, it's constant. But every time you have to plug stuff in and make and test it, and even then, well, you all have seen over, when I only use the room twice a year, you know, I, I can test the thing the day before and then the next day everything goes wrong because we don't use it on a regular basis. Um, that's my fear of portability, is that there are more things to go wrong. Okay, just um, to circle back. Sure. We have, we actually have four options. One option is to do nothing mm -hmm. and stay where we are here. Okay, that's, that's still an option. Mm -hmm. um, one of the problems with that is what we saw tonight when we, when we have the kids in and a lot of people, it gets crowded. Um, we don't have it that often. Um, and I still think it would be nice to be in one of our buildings rather than a town building, but that is an option, okay? No one's, we don't, we don't have to move. Um, for me, option two 
is out based on the same thing that Kathleen said. The feeling is that if we're gonna look at new construction and be working in the central school, um, option two just doesn't seem that it's very feasible. Mm -hmm. um, option three, for all the reasons that you said, I think unless you have a very experienced staff that knows exactly what they're doing, um, I think I just think that history is we're going to run into problems every time we try to set up, especially if you have a different person doing it and different problems moving the equipment around. Um, I like the idea, but I think the reality of it is that I don't think it's going to work well. Um, so that pushes me back up to option, option one in the cafeteria. Now my question is, because I'm not sure what you said, if we stay, if we move to the cafeteria and it's just on, it'll just be on six? No, it would also be live stream. Okay, so even in, right. in the cafeteria, the quality would be improved? Yes. Would the quality be the same as it is here? Not on channel six, but on our live stream broadcast, yes. Okay. Um, when we record the deliberative and the public hearing, those actually turn out better than the live broadcast does because it's going through that analog system to get the live broadcast. But what, the feed that we're getting is actually pretty good. We, we bought brand new, or the, the Cable Commission bought brand new cameras for us last year, and they've turned out very well for us. They're not HD quality. At the time, I said, we don't have a digital encoder. There's no sense of you buying HD quality cameras for something that we don't know if it's ever going to get improved. And so if we did want to move up to HD quality, I think that's what these cameras are here at $1,500 a piece, which we would replace those again. About $6,000 to replace those cameras. Any other questions? Um, we don't have to make a decision tonight. We can think about this, do some research. Yeah, can we find out about the analog modulator, whatever it is? Oh, certainly. I'm they're sorry. Gonna, they're calling me back. Digital with encoder. Right. <laughs> well, it is an analog modulator yes. going to a digital encoder. Yeah, upgrading that. <laughs> so can we do that and then we'll... Two quick questions. Yes. Do we have to broadcast live on Channel 6 at all? That's up to you. That's what I said. That's what I... That was what my comment there. We don't, we don't have to broadcast live on Channel 6. We can always broadcast the next day on channel six as a recorded, uh, which is what they do on channel 17. Uh, and then just only do live broadcasting on our live stream channel. Okay. That is, uh, you're only broadcasting live, I believe, for the Sunshine Law, am I correct? Or for people's, for people's um, it's, ability you know, it's to not for It's not for, there's no, there's no requirement that okay. we broadcast right. uh, our meetings. At but all, there, in there, any way. I think the public, there is a certain portion of the public that's used to go into Channel 6 for the meeting. So. Yeah, they yeah. can get it recorded. Yeah, but I think, you know, and, and we've had this discussion at the, at the SAU level as well. I yeah. think, you know, the fact that it would be available, you know, typically within 24 hours on Channel 6 and repeated, there's anybody who wants to watch it can watch it. Mm -hmm. Can watch so. it the next day. And just FYI, I've been working very hard the past year or two to have these broadcasts up by noon the following day. So, I yeah, I, so I, yeah, I think one way or another, they're, they're available. They, be, yeah. they become available yeah. and pretty quick. So. And I guess my second question is, I know the ask was for to film the school board, but hearing about, hey, this could be used for other things. Mm -hmm. um, so our current state to film at the middle school or here or whatever you would like to film, it's below par. I'm, everything that you see on Channel 6 that's a recording of... I'm not talking about the quality. I'm talking about overall, your ability to film on the field or, right. or at field day or to capture what you really want to capture in the event that we just saw on Friday. Uh -huh. This being portable would be 10 steps ahead of where you are right now. 
for quality, for ability to I'm not going to say that, I, I, I'm not going to agree that it would be 10 steps ahead in quality because the well, cameras, I'm just saying, the cameras that I've, per, that I've purchased for what we use now to do uh, our school events are very nice HD cameras and they provide a good quality recording. They are a single camera being broadcast at one time as opposed to three cameras that are being mixed to give you that sense of a professional uh, that we have a team that's doing this. That's what, and when you watch these broadcasts, you'll notice that the camera angles change from time to time, depending on who's speaking. I can't get that without the motion of the camera um, when I'm doing a single camera. That's the difference in quality. The, what, I've, what I have uh, quoted here, these $860 cameras, they're just a little bit above what I currently have. Okay. Okay, so can we, um, one thing, could we somehow look into what the access and, or cost and access would be for personnel if we wanted to do this mobile broadcasting? Someone mentioned Pinkerton Academy. They have an AV department. Okay. Um, well, the other thing too is that it wouldn't necessarily be a full-time position. It would be like oh, part-time as needed. As needed. Yeah. So it would probably be more of a stipend situation. Yeah. So my question with that is finding somebody. Yep. Well, yeah, you need reliable people, right? You need so who that's feasible for. You get like them trained. A, and an as-is kind of on-call person, that's, yeah. I, I don't know how particularly feasible that is. I don't, yeah. maybe there, listen, maybe there are staff that would be willing and could be consistent. Listen, I just, I remember going to the town meetings a long time ago, and I remember a certain librarian who later became chair of this school board with the camera in the back. I remember seeing her on a regular basis. Maybe there are some staff members that would, you know, regularly do it. Maybe there's not. I don't know. I, but I'm thinking more, I mean, I feel like with mobile, we're almost talking more about like school day. Yeah, well, stuff. this. And then you've got staff who are doing things. Yeah. There's a that, couple. That's, I mean, I mean you've got kids and you've got kids from Pinkerton who are in school. school. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a couple of productions that are during the school day, but there's also, I mean, I think the bulk of them are, are in the evenings. So it's probably like one production per grade level at the central school, and then you get the band and chorus. I don't know what else. I don't know if the debate team would want to hold something. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I think that's nice, but I think, you know, it's uh, nice that this came up. But in my mind, the original request was just to handle school board oh, meetings. Oh, school board meetings. That's true. Yeah. And this came on as, a, as an add-on because it exists. Mm -hmm. But the request was to find out what we could do to move it to a school for our meetings. I, I agree. I, I just, I like the option, and I'm thinking of other stuff as well, in, including like Article 2 type stuff, like when we hold community forum in the cafeteria, or in the, um, well, the gym cafeteria over the central, so like perfect opportunity to get the mobile broadcast in there and, and do some things. Like, I think there's, it opens up other possibilities. I don't disagree that it's it, it's a good idea. I'm I'm just really concerned about the reality and the workability of getting people to do it on a regular basis, and that hour of to set up ahead of time and then, I think and then those break are valid it down. Points. Those 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 are valid points. So, so my, can we ask maybe that um, we can do any more of our independent research if we want, talk to people, and bring this back at the next meeting, mm -hmm. and perhaps at the next meeting we'll be ready to make a decision. I should have information from Comcast as well. And I'll be speaking with the Cable Commission tomorrow night and seeing what their feelings on okay. maybe helping us find personnel would be. Okay, so be, when you leave though, I think we're all in agreement that option, <coughs> option two is out. Option two is out, okay. okay. And if we can get more information about option three, that would be helpful. I think mm -hmm. we all understand what option one is. Certainly. Or this one, to stay here. Well, let me just double check something. All right, so for the HMS CAF, we would need a television monitor. We already have a television monitor on the sidewall. Right. You have it listed in I here. have it listed. Oh, HDMI cable. I'm sorry, cable. for the television monitor. Right. Okay. All right, so we don't need a monitor for the HMS CAF. So um, for a mobile presentation, the only reason why we would need the television is for the central school. Correct. Or if you had it in the middle school library oh, or right. someplace. You go outside of the cafeteria. You know, right. Because right. is there, isn't there a, a monitor in the gym over at the middle school? No. It does not? 
All right. There's you nowhere know else, but this, this would be the mobile, not to har keep harping on it, but um, uh, election night. What? The election announcements and stuff like that. I know where they run down to the cafeteria and stuff like that. Right. Right. To be able to live stream that and do that stuff, like, as opposed to be just typing. You yeah. were live. It's I just was, once I was, a year. Oh, that's, streaming that's true. I did. Oh, you I did. Do pull, this. I did. I did. <laughs> I did yeah. 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 You need to improve the signal. I was going to say that it's the signal, signal is, the, is the causes some issues there. So. Yeah, and I think that's another thing too. It's twice the cost, so we somehow have to, ju you know, also justify how many times you would use it. Elections like one night. Um, you know, or how many concerts or w how many times would it actually be used? We can do so, that research on our end as well. Sure. Some of those, uh, you know, major events that we have. The, the other thought is, is maybe, you know, you do some of this in stage, stages. And, you know, if there's something that we can research now, it'll be ready for the budget mm -hmm. for next year. You know, so, you know, we can get some of that done. If we can't do it this year, you know, at least we've got some of the preliminary estimates. I know there are a couple of things in option one that I'm going to do regardless of what your decision is, and that is to buy the new speakers to have the optimized sound because I don't want to have a meeting over there and have a buzz in our speakers. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, Like I said, there's a couple of things that I'm going to do regardless. I wrapped it in here because if you're going to pay for it in a package, I'll just go ahead and get that too. But um, if you wanted to start experimenting by having middle, having the the meetings at the middle school even in the fall very little cost to get you started there because we already have the equipment we already have all of this stuff with just a couple of minor upgrades we can continue putting our projector on a cart and doing it the way we've done it you know if you wanted to go that route just to see what it was like to have regular meetings in the building okay can I ask that Melissa put this on the next agenda yes the next meeting thank you Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Now we're more confused than when we started. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Huh? Which one was that? Uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. How long was that? How long we had a lot of questions. Okay. Suspension authorization. <sighs> Annual board authorization for superintendent and assistant superintendent to suspend students beyond the 10 days as outlined in RSA 193.13. I have a motion. I'll make the motion to authorize the superintendent and his designee to continue the suspension of a student for a period in excess of 10 school days as provided for in RSA 193 colon 13 paragraph B. Second. Discussion? I mean, this is not something new. This is, no. this is in, annual in our policy, but we have to renew, we have to go over it every year. Mm -hmm. Rarely used, but required by state law. So, mm -hmm. no discussion. All in favor? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Same thing for summer hiring. This is not new. We do this every year. Provisions of policy GCF state that the school board shall elect one board member to act on personnel matters while the board is not in session during the summer months. Ratification of that one member's action shall then be presented to the full board at their first board meeting of the school year. Um, this is so when we're not meeting in July and August, if there's a personnel issue that comes up, one member of the board is designated uh, to handle it and then bring it back to us, tell us about it when we write our first meeting. So, um, so the way that this reads, it looks like um, the chair already has this authorization, possibly. It says, I'm just, maybe I'm just reading too far into it. From June 15th um, to September 1st, any member of the board, so designated by the board, in absence of the quorum of the full board, be empowered to act on personnel matters as presented during the summer months when the board is not meeting and to bring recommendations forward to the board for approval at subsequent board meetings and that valid contracts would be issued upon recommendation and that the chair be authorized to sign them or in his her absence his her designee yes 
Right. So that means that the chair is already authorized to do this anyhow? Uh, the ch no, well, it means the chair signs contract, employment contracts. We sign them. So if we, right. if we delegate this, then this person would sign in place of the chair. Oh, okay. All right. So you have to designate as a board who will be that For the summer hiring. Who's person gonna, for the summer, be here for the summer hiring. Okay. Who's around? Uh, I'm going to be around a couple of vacations, but nothing big. I'm around. We vacation in the fall. <laughs> so, whoever. I'm around too. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> well, who wants to do it? How about that? <laughs> we have nominations, or we can just ask who wants to do it. She asked. Huh? He, he, she who asks. First. We need to know who to call when there is something to act on so that someone can come. Well, we pretty much, yeah. uh, three of us are there every two weeks signing off on vouchers anyhow. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Designate someone. Matter. Just yeah, it's pick not, someone. I got it. Kathleen? Jim, you got it. it. I volunteer. Okay. okay. So I'll make the motion that the board designate Jim Sweeney as the board member who's authorized to act on personnel matters while the board is not in session during the summer months. I'll second. Any Do I have to discussion? second? <laughs> All in favor of the motion? Congratulations, Jim. Unanimous motion carried. Thank <laughs> you, Jim. It's, it's fair, fairly it's go rare. And, world. Then, and when it's, <laughs> when it, you know, if it's been a serious issue, then we've managed to find a quorum over the summer, and those have been pretty rare. We don't have a high need of hiring this year. We're, we're getting a lot of that done before the summer. Um, but there may be some actions on uh, resignations that we have to address. So. Okay, next policies. There are 11 policies up for review. Six are for second read and adoption, and five for first reading. The first six are at second read. It's IBDC Internet Log File Retention, CH Policy Implementation, CHA Development of Procedures, CHB Board Review of Procedures, ECE Traffic and Parking Procedures, and IMGA Service Animals. Board have any question on any of those? This is the second time we're looking at them. So take a minute and go through them. So I just wanted to point out, it's a misprint on here. It says second reading for the next five, but those are first reading on the, on the seven through 11 as first reading. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Thank okay. you for pointing that out. No, I just. Seven through 11 are the first. I, th I think you said it right, but yeah. Yeah. I, but then you said afterwards that it's the second time looking at these. So I just wanted to clarify and make sure. I found the one mistake that Melissa made in like a year. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> when you're ready, I'll accept a motion to adopt the six policies that we just read into the record. So moved. I'll second. Further discussion? If not, all in favor? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, first read is DKA Payroll Procedures, JLF Child Abuse and Neglect, GCG Part-Time and Substitute Professional Staff Teachers, GCC Professional Staff Leaves of Absence, and JICA Dress Code. make a motion that we um, accept those policies on the first read. Second. All in favor? 
Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. My next board comments and correspondence. We have correspondence. Um, did everyone get a copy? You're reading that? The fiber, fiber project? Yeah. Uh, uh, we have a letter from Commissioner of Education, Frank Edelblue to uh, Superintendent Metzler. It is my pleasure to notify you that your recent application to the Public School Infrastructure Fund established in RSA 198 15 Y for the fiber project has been approved. Your award reflects 10% of the project costs not to exceed $1,400. At the completion of your project, please submit a completion of project and request for payment. Uh, form with the Department of Education. The form can be found online. Your award must be claimed by April 1, 2019. If you are unable to complete your project by that time, please contact the department for further assistance. Um, blah, blah, blah. Sincerely, Frank Edelblu. Okay, so we've done that. Second correspondence is um, from Linda Butler on behalf of Pinkerton Academy inviting members to attend the spring uh, sending school representatives dinner be held may 29th at 6 p.m in the astro cafe of the academy building has anyone responded um i've responded that i am attending I responded directly to uh linda would anyone else be interested in going if so would you please let dr wilson know and she'll respond for you i've responded yes as well okay uh, that's it for correspondence, and uh, I don't really have anything else. So next, Kathleen, any comments or? No. Nope. Jim. <coughs> Community show was fantastic. Yeah, it was. It really was. The parade and 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 the and, and the event and the artwork afterwards and the video. Yeah, it was, it was a very nice morning. Uh, I actually thought it was one of the best and a really good example of how we integrate right. curriculum in our schools. Jason. It was a band concert. I thought they, um, as usual, the music department did a fantastic job. Uh, I know we had a unified art presentation that, earlier, but um, they did a, a great job over there. So, And then uh, some track meets. So. Caitlin. Band and chorus concerts at the middle school. Echoing what Jason said, they did amazing as usual. Um, Mr. Robbins and Mr. Fisher really, the music program is, blows my mind sometimes what they are able to accomplish with the kids and what these kids are learning. So yeah. thank you to them. They really are exceptional. Oh, I want to, there was also the art show too. It oh, wasn't yes. just, it wasn't yes. just the band that we Sorry. did have yes. the, art, the, the art show as well. Also mind-boggling, the art <laughs> talent at the middle school because they certainly produce things I never could. So that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on to the consent agenda, Dr. Wilson. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, the assistant principal hiring process, we started today. We interviewed 15 people, which is why I have a glaze about me today. <laughs> How many applicants did you get, roughly? Um, probably 40 in one school and 50 in the other. Okay. So we have, we, we brought in um, 15. 15? Uh, 15 today, yeah. And uh, we are going to be doing a second round by bringing back probably seven to eight people out of that round. We're bringing them back next week. And then from there, we're going to do probably the top four. So two for the elementary, two for the middle. Um, we're going to have uh, Dr. Metzler and Karen Yuzenka uh, uh, have an opportunity to have a discussion and a conversation with them. 
and then we'll have consensus of who to offer the positions to. So it's somewhat flexible right now, but I think we were uh, quite pleased with the first round of interviews. So, and everyone's highly um, appreciative uh, and have done their homework on the Hampstead School District. So we're pleased with that. Um, the sending school districts, you already talked about that, um, the, the dinner meeting uh, at Pinkerton. Uh, that, I just was gonna remind you of that as well. Um, there was a sending school district meeting where, the, again, the uh, superintendents uh, usually meet once a quarter. Uh, this was the first meeting that we've had with Dr. Powers, uh, who was now the interim headmaster. It went very well. One of the things that you know, they're still discussing, it hasn't been formalized, but they're going through the, the discussion of having more of an international um, uh, 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 presence in their, in their um, student body. So they are talking about what will that look like uh, next year with perhaps a relationship with the academy out of Chester, New Hampshire, which is Bush Academy from China. And that's an international school. It's not just Chinese students. Um, but uh, they're still kind of formulating that. Um, and so we gave them some feedback and, and certainly you know, saw it as an opportunity to, to really kind of shine with that global um, presence uh, here in, in local New Hampshire. So they were excited about that, but still doing a lot of work behind the scenes. When they have something formal, um, some, they will send someone here to communicate that to the, to the board. So I will let you know about that. Um, and that's about it in terms of what we've been doing. Motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, are we still on board comments? Do you want to talk about your committee? Oh, sorry. Because I had it on my report, but I thought maybe you might want to talk about it. Right, right. Um, the last meeting we had for the sustainability committee was on the May 16th. Um, so some of the topics that we spoke about. So the goals were sustainability and recycling community outreach. Um, so initially, I think uh, from the first, one of the first meetings we talked about solar power and Tom uh, reached out to the vendors and solar power for, jump in if you would like, for schools really doesn't have the, uh, the offsets for, um, for tax, tax savings like residential does. So it's not really feasible right now to put solar on the roof of our schools or at least our middle school, which would be the, the best place to put solar. Um, but there's no tax advantages and it would cost too much money to put it there. Well, there were some discussions about, you know, how could we possibly incorporate solar in our educational program, even if we might not be able to put it on the roof, but how could we possibly get a panel on the ground and use that to to put data into the school and power something to teach kids how solar works. Um, so that's, that's one, one topic. Tom is still looking at that, continues to uh, look at the state incentives for that. Um, composting, there was this, so from our first meeting and continue on later, there was talk about composting and there's issues with that, w with, with rodents and availability for maintenance and um, and I think if we were going to move forward with that, it might have to be by an outside vendor taking care of that. Um, there, um, and then there is uh, increased recycling that we're looking at within the two schools and, and getting involvement to uh, raise that. Uh, that's one thing we're working on. Uh, currently, green facts are something that the schools do when they announce that over the PA system, um, different um, topics that they talk of. Um, we also talked about um, uh, possibly a student education assembly in the fall. Um, we're also looking at um, like 
um, savers and someone else to put on a clothing drive, possibly in the fall. That's something we're looking at. And increasing the hydroponic garden that we have at the middle school, possibly having the same thing at the central school and some small scale composting to work in there also. There's some other topics that are on here that we're, we're discussing. So, a little bit. And when was the last time you guys met? May 16th. May 16th. That's, um, the last time we heard administrative reports, we heard from Mr. Collins over at the Central School with the Garbage Gorilla Program and um, Hampstead's head of the Recycling and, and Waste Management Committee, um, Ellen Cabral had come in and I, she, I guess she does some work with them and there was some talk about composting over at the Central School. Somebody from the Central School on that committee? Right, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so this is, this is happening together? It's not disconnected? Well, the, the, <coughs> the Garbage Gorillas wasn't part of this. Right. Well, the Garbage Gorillas has already been going on. No, I But know I mean, that. as far as the, I think there was talk, didn't you say something about a farmer um, interested in helping compost? Is that, is that anything that the committee is aware of? Are we working together? Actually, the lady that came from, that did the assessment, that STAR assessment on the school, that was her specific recommendation that I work on it. There's usually a follow-up report, which I have not received yet from her, but that is one of the recommendations. And I am talking to a local farmer in the cafeteria about the plans, but yeah. you're getting a little bit ahead of me. All right, sorry. <laughs> but, but are we all on the same page? That was, are, are you on the committee? Are you on this committee? I, no. I'm not on <coughs> this committee. No. No? No. We'll right. talk about it. Okay. You, you want <laughs> to be, right? Absolutely. <laughs> one more committee. I live for one more committee. <laughs> well, at least talk to him. <laughs> That's <Yes>. all. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Mr. Sweeney will probably keep me in the loop because he's, <laughs> he's around occasionally. <laughs> the, um, the, the solar panel thing, um, I, I get what you're saying. One avenue that we might just want to check with is Derry and London Derry, both municipal, um, are going to solar. Brentwood already did it. So. But that's the whole town, I believe. I don't think it's just the schools. <clears throat> I, I don't know, and, and I don't know if they're paying outright or if there is, if they were able to calculate some return that would pay for them or not. But it's just, it's something to inquire about. Because I, I, both of them have recently greenlit uh, solar installations. So. Okay, okay thank you. <clears throat> that concludes really the public portion of the meeting. We're now going to go into non-public under RSA 91A3 colon 2I safety. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Abrazizi? Yes. Mr. Cipriano? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Jasenka? Yes. Thank you, Sophie. <coughs> No, you would actually have fun on that.